Hey, hey, assistant coach, how are you guys doing? It is me, Johnny Sports, and welcome back to the Liverpool career mode. You guys are just crazy. I mean, we had over 1,000 transfer suggestions in the comments down below, and I've been going through all of them. So a new center defensive midfielder will be bought in this episode. Let's get straight into that, shall we? I have seen many, many suggestions. Players like Matuidi, I've seen Krišovjak, I've seen William Cavallo, all these players. But I've also seen Nemanja Matic. And I knew this guy is the right one. He's 85 rated already. I told you guys I want a high rated center defensive midfielder who is able to defend, who is strong and you guys have given me his name. Nemanja Matic is in my opinion one of the best center defensive midfield players in the world and I want to thank to all the assistant coaches who have suggested his name and have told me to buy him. I obviously have seen many many people saying like Matuidi. Matuidi is only 5 foot 9. Nain Golan, same with him. He's only 5'9". I need a strong center defensive midfielder because he will be playing in that position on his own. So you need someone who can outstrengthen your opponent. And Nemanja Matic and Krišovjak, these were the two that I had to decide between. But uh, Matic is just higher rated, so he is just a perfect fit for our team right now. And we are playing our first match with Royce in our squad, I believe. If you guys can't remember, in the last episode, it was also the transfer window and we have gotten ourselves Marco Royce. Everyone was quite pleased with that, uh, with that transfer and I certainly am very happy about that one because I love him in real life. He's one of my favorite players to watch and right here you can see he is in our starting lineup. We are playing against QPR, a team that I was expecting to beat quite easily. Coutinho gets a good pass, he's now through. He does see his teammate make a run. Sturridge, mate, what are you doing? What is that about? I mean, that shot was just terrible. But you guys know, lately, Sturridge and Coutinho have been very in form now. Christian Benteke on the ball. He's cutting inside, has a lot of space. Passes it to Daniel Sturridge. And there he goes. That pass was actually supposed to be for Coutinho. But it somehow landed at the feet of Sturridge. And he scores the first goal for Liverpool in this match. Christian Benteke gets the assist for that one. I believe Coutinho actually let that one through for him. So that's a good thing he did right there. Roberto Firmino and Origi are now joining into the squad because Sturridge and Coutinho were quite tired. Let's see what those two can do. But as you guys might remember in the last episode or in the last episodes, I have been declaring Roberto Firmino as the king of simulations. So hopefully he'll be able to do something in the match as well. 17th minute, that was a chance for QPR. Another one coming in right here with Seferovic, passing it to Hoylit, Hoylit then to Sandro and in the end it does hit the crossbar or the post, I can't really look at that one closely but Horn deflected it onto it now Marco Royce is on the ball he's getting past one of the opponents and then he's cutting back inside into the penalty area and he gets taken down after doing a really unnecessary roulette, I actually wanted to do that one into the other direction but somehow ended up doing it into the other direction instead and we have gotten the penalty and Marco Royce for his debut match he would get the penalty and he would also score it he makes it 2-0 and that's a debut goal for Marco Royce that's exactly how you want your debut to be in front of the cup the fans are screaming his name and everyone is happy about that one now we are in the 84th minute and this time Maksimovic coming in with a decent tackle like Referee, I'm not too sure if that one was a penalty. I certainly wouldn't have given it. I mean, take a look at this. He is touching the ball. And then after that, the player drops down. So I really don't understand how that is a penalty. But he gives it to QPR. 86th minute. It will be Horn against Fair. Okay, Panenka. Well, we just conceded. It's 2-1 and uh, there's still four minutes to go. Oh, yes, there is a block from our defense now. Roberto Firmino with the pass, starting the counter-attack. Origi again to Danny Ings. 90th minute. Could we make it 3-1? No, we are hitting the post. Yes, but still that's three points of four. I was just about to say Bayer Leverkusen for some reason. Why the hell did I want to say Bayer Leverkusen? I really don't understand what's going on in my head right now. But Liverpool has gotten three points and I am now asking 
for Matic. I really want this guy in my team. 30 million plus Lori. He is a player that we haven't used at all and I will never use probably because we have Riedewald and we have Ginta. So I'm not really interested in using him. I'm using him though in the transfer deal for Matic. I know I'm paying a lot for him. But you have to know he's already 85 rated and he can go up to an 87 or even an 88 rating. So he is the perfect fit for the future in my opinion. We are getting an offer for Benteke, 34 million from Spurs. That's not enough, I'm rejecting all offers. I am not looking forward to sell Benteke this season. The same goes for uh, Daniel Sturridge. I'm really not looking to sell any of my strikers this season. Maybe next season or... Let's just put it this way, probably for sure next season because this this is just not working out. Our team is good. I mean, they are they are average. They are just slightly above average right now. And the striking position, that is just not working out. But Chelsea have accepted the offer for Matic and now we are on the transfer deadline day and he does accept the contract offer. Matic is now joining Liverpool 85 rated. 28 years old established center defensive midfielder this is exactly what i wanted to see in my team assisting coaches so thank you so much for suggesting matic but on the right hand side you can see him is already taking over his role and he does have some great stats on him he's really good in defending he has 90 stamina, 90 strength, high defensive work rates. He's six foot four tall. So he's just basically the perfect center defensive midfielder for our team. Now AS Monaco is trying to buy Coutinho. And boys, Coutinho is someone that I will never sell. I'm not getting rid of Coutinho at any point in this career mode. Only if they offer like something above 100 million. But Coutinho will not leave the team unless we get around 100 million for him. I know he's not worth it right now. But there is like a emotional worth that I have for Coutinho. He is my favorite player for Liverpool. So I don't want him to go anywhere. But here is the transfer deadline day. We are still working it out with AS Monaco. And luckily... They did not say, yes, we are matching it. They just said they will stop pursuing Coutinho. And that's a good message on the right-hand side. You can see David Silva moved over to Barcelona. And uh, Pereira moved over to Manchester United. Those are the two big transfer deals at this transfer window. And then uh, the latest deals show you a couple of players uh, changing teams. Nothing too important right there. Oscar Lingard. We have been talking about this guy for quite some long time and I'm still waiting for him to turn 17 years old because as you guys know he is very very small he's only five foot tall and uh, if he turns 17 he should go up to like five foot five at least so that is something we are waiting for to get him into the first team James Milner has been taking a role in the team that's Ah, that's quite unlucky for him because currently this formation doesn't really need James Milner. But whenever I can, I will sub him in as a substitute for Markovic on the right midfield side. James Milner is certainly better at crossing than Markovic right now on his statistics, I believe. So that will be something I will do. Markovic is someone that I have found true love with. I have to say, I really like the guy on the right midfield position. And currently, by the way, we are only three points away from the first spot in the league. So we haven't been this close. And now that Chelsea have lost Matic, I'm actually looking forward to see them lose a few more matches because one of their best defensive midfielders, or better said, their best defensive midfielder has left their team. So hopefully their midfield will not be as strong as it used to be. Our next match is against Aston Villa. Matic straight away is showing that he is not someone to joke with. If you want to dribble against him, he will take you down. And right there, he's showing it to one of the players of Aston Villa. Now Benteke on the ball, looking for his teammate on the right-hand side. Markovic on the 18th minute. He does cut inside, cross it in. Coutinho scores! I thought that was offside, but it wasn't. Coutinho scores the header after the cross of Markovic. And also after me saying that Milner has a better cross than him. But Coutinho 
Luckily, it wasn't offside, even though it looked like an offside for me. But that must have been a very, very close decision. Now, Christian Benteke again on the ball. And he gets taken down. And that should be a red card for Aston Villa in the 61st minute. And yes, it is. It is a red card. And that gives us an even better advantage against Aston Villa now to move on with the 1-0 lead and maybe extend it. Matic now with a great pass over to Daniel Sturridge. He gets to it and his shot is blocked by the keeper. What, what a pass that was. But on top of that, that first touch from Sturridge was amazing. Now Origi, Firmino and Henderson are joining in. Henderson obviously will now be the guy to, to be subbed in every single time. Matic is uh, kind of tired. But Henderson straight away gets a chance to score and he hits the post. And Liverpool getting closer to that second goal. Now Roberto Firmino with the pass over to Daniel Sturridge. He does have some space. He waits for Roberto Firmino again. Another big chance now. Firmino on the ball. He is spinning around the Burba spin to get past the player. Passing it to Daniel Sturridge on the left. He crosses it in because he does see Divock Origi on the far post. And he does score it. 90th minute. We are making it 2-0 for Liverpool. And that is a scoreline that we deserved. We at least deserved one more goal in my opinion. And now we have gotten it. Divock Origi with a sublime finish. Wow. That's actually the first time I said sublime because, you know, I'm from Germany and I watch English commentaries from football games and I do hear that it was a sublime finish. I don't even know what that means, but I know that means that was a good shot. So I'll just take it. I'll use it. So whatever. <laughs> we have scored and it's 2-0 and Origi has done a good job as a substitute. Magellan on top of the victory is now going up to a 65 rating. He's growing quite fast and this is the league table. Chelsea have won their game. It is still three points between us and them. Arsenal are chasing us and Arsenal is being chased by Spurs and Everton. Manchester City and Manchester United below the top five. That is quite surprising. I was expecting Manchester City to be at the top again. But after the uh, big loss of the title in the last season... It seems like they are kind of destroyed morally and they can't get back up into the top five. But here you can see we are playing against Norwich City and it's another game that our team should be winning. Hooper now with a pass over into the middle. And we conceded already. Wow, I, I couldn't have timed that uh, we should be winning better. I mean, that was just a really horrible start. Now, Benteke is trying to score in this episode. I have pressed... The shooting button for at least five times and it never worked out so Benteke was just running towards the goal trying to carry the ball inside the goal but here you can see Coutinho with good dribbling he is stopping taking a turn and then trying to finesse it into the far post but that one didn't work out as good as he wanted it to. Now Origi with some skills. He will be cutting his side. He is looking for Coutinho outside of the penalty area. It's a finesse shot. And this time it does go in. Coutinho with his second goal in this episode. And like I told you guys, Daniel Sturridge and Coutinho have been the outstanding players so far in the last few episodes. And Coutinho is definitely taking over right now. He is the guy on four, man. You can see see him doing really well with his shots and stuff but we are now in the 53rd minute it is Origi with a cross inside for Benteke and that one will get saved by the goalkeeper and we still try to move on and get to that ball again but it didn't work out now though the goal scorer Coutinho had to be subbed off because of stamina reasons Danny Ings, Firmino and James Milner are joining in and I was looking forward to see one of these three to have an impact on the game Roberto Firmino trying his best passing it to Matic his shot comes off the crossbar and Origi heads it but a great save by the goalkeeper who does get back up to his feet and then in the end saves his team from losing this game in the end, we are only getting one point out of the game against Norwich City. We could have certainly done better, but I'm quite happy with our performances so far. And our next opponent in the FA Cup will be Chelsea. They will be looking for revenge after losing Matic to us and uh, I will be looking to get their morale down especially for the BPL because sometimes if you beat uh, your opponent in the league in the cup 
their morale goes down and their players drop down on form and that helps you to get uh, further in the league and maybe take over the first position and that is exactly what I'm planning. Tell me guys, do you enjoy the Matic transfer? I personally think he is the perfect deal for our team. I would have loved to get Matuidi or Golan, but those guys are just a bit too small. Matuidi is one of my personal favorite center defensive midfielders in the world but he's only 5 foot 9 tall and that is not tall enough to be a strong center defensive midfielder in real life he does a good job but in FIFA that's just the way the mechanics work if you have a taller center defensive midfielder with high stand tackle and all that stuff with strength he will be much better for you uh, rather than someone who is only five foot nine tall but in the end, I really hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Please smash that like button. Let's see if we can get to 2,000 likes. That would be great. And now enjoy the player of the episode, which is, you guessed it, Coutinho.